everything we've been taught about health is a complete lie. We've been told that it's just nutrition, it's just exercise, and that is just not true. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the number one metric that you're going to want to track to know your body's stress levels, your health, your optimum performance, and how your body actually connects and speaks to you in its own language. And how do we understand that language? Welcome to God's Business where I interview the top Christian business leaders, thought leaders, and influencers, where you can create not just a good business, but God's business, where he is the multiplier of your success. I have a great friend of mine that has built a phenomenal multi-seven-figure business, was a professional athlete, and is an absolute like, biologist, smart guy with tons of degrees that is going to show you guys how you can transform, where you guys can transform your business. So welcome my good friend, Justin, who owns Own It Coaching. Justin, what's up, man? God's business. Welcome. I'm doing good, man. It's always you? great to see your face. Obviously, to hear your voice for the people that are listening on audio. Again, check us out on YouTube if not. Yet, you've been someone that's that's inspired a lot of people that have a great amounts of wealth. Like I remember getting into the health industry myself. It's always my goal to work with wealthy people. I never really like worked with wealth, wealth, and got to see this like phase of how important health really is to people. We always talk about the, you know, the, when it's like, we talk about Apple and we look at Steve Jobs and how he died and he would have like literally given all of his wealth just to live one more year. And I feel that when you're in the fight of it, you're like, yeah, I get that's important, but I'm willing to sacrifice it to try to get wealth because you just don't know. And now just seeing some of the clients that you work with, one of my close friends, Brandon, and, and plenty of others just how life transforming it is for them just really gave me a breath of fresh air going success leaves clues. And if successful people are investing in this area of their life and they're realizing that this is like a, a cheat code, possibly even the highest performing piece for them to invest in growing their company, their influence, their energy, their family. It's like, man, this is such a key thing that can really take us out of, out of the game, especially as a Christian business leader when we think, this is just, oh, it's just a meat suit that we walk around in. So before we get into all the cool stuff, not that your business isn't cool, let's let's really break down what own it is, because I may just totally forget as we jump into all this health cool stuff. What is what is own it doing? Who do you guys work with? How are you guys working with them? You know, how are you guys expanding? You guys are rapidly growing and it's really cool and, and not a lot of people have done it. Yeah. So with with own it, the mission of our company is to redeem and restore the health of the world through empowerment and education to allow people to take ownership of their health for quite often the first time. Um, and, uh, or in what you'll see on our website to take ownership of your health again, because there's a time when everybody feels like they had control of their health. They feel like they had some level of ownership. And for us, we focus on, uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, executives specifically, because those are the people who have stepped into a God-given calling, whether they know it or whether they don't, of service. And they've answered that calling from God to go and drive into something. And oftentimes they've had to exchange or they believe they've had to exchange their health for their mission or their health for their calling. And what we help them do is ultimately give them their health back, give them control of that again so they can do more of what they've been called to do. They can realize that impact for a greater period of time with more energy, with more vibrance, um, sleeping better, uh, with less brain fog, with less body aches, body pains. Um, because we, we live in this place, and I've, I kind of coined it the, the fake health continuum, where there's the left side, which is death and disease, and the far right side, which is true health. And in the middle, you have this area called fake health. And that's disease-free, but symptom-full your brain fog, your headaches, your nausea, your body aches, your anxiety, your depression, your um, uh, fatigue, your inability to sleep. All of these things are symptoms that were not well, but yet we just chalk it up to as an excuse and as, oh, this is what it requires to be an entrepreneur. This is what it requires to be a business owner. This is what it requires to age. But that's not true. That's just, it's, it's just a belief that we've been told by society and in fact, the longer we stay in this space of fake health, the shorter and smaller our window becomes 
to actually utilize it from a preventative measure of health to get into true health. And then it goes into a treatment space where we slide to the left and go into that death and disease bucket. And so for us, the biggest goal is to get into people and create these, uh, this deep understanding of competence over your body. The moment you have competence of something is the moment you can steward it. And in our, in our bodies, they're just, you talk about it being like a meat suit. Um, it's, it's actually the, something that's really purposeful. And, um, in first Corinthians three seventeen, it talks about if anybody destroys God's temple, which is our body, God will destroy him for God's temple is holy and you are that temple. And so I think to be able to come back to that and know that we are literally living and breathing in God's temple and God like resides within us. We have a obligation as business owners in order to steward our mission. What we are carrying is God's calling. And we have a, we have a responsibility to make sure that our mind, body, heart, and environment, which we call our soul, is in the best the best shape, the best condition, the best preparation mode so that we can ultimately realize all the promises and all the gifts. You can tell even the the middle phase that you talked about, it's almost like that ignorance is bliss. They say that the worst pain in the world, one of my mentors, Cole says this, he says the worst pain in the world is chronic pain because it's just enough pain to nag people their entire life, but it's not high enough to get them to change it. So like back pain, it's like if someone were to come to them and say, Hey, for 10,000 bucks, you'll never be in pain again. They'll go, oh, it's, I mean, it's not that bad. Like it's manageable. And I've seen this even in couples sometimes. I saw a couple the other day, they ate the same, but because one was a little bit more genetically gifted, metabolism, whatever, one was lean and small and just kind of like skinny fat. And the other one was overweight. And I was like, wow, they're really like, their focus on health is really the same. Just like one person is in this, well, I'm not overweight. I'm not, I don't really have a problem, but where's our barometer? Like, what are we measuring by? We don't even know what that they talked about. I remember, I think it was Mark Hyman or one of the guys that maybe primal kitchen. I remember he had a quote one time and I try to give credit where credit's due. Maybe it was bulletproof even. They had talked about that when you are in a really bad smelling room, like you have to leave it to like, or you'll get used to it. You don't even know that it's bad anymore and you have to leave it and come back in. And a lot of times I think we're operating, like you said, maybe in that brain fog, things that we just don't think are that bad because we've just gotten so used to being mediocre. And it's not until we get around someone that kind of challenges us, right? And maybe yeah. fitness is a hard one. You look at a fit person, someone will look at you and be like, oh, well, you were an athlete, right? Like you're a pro athlete. So it's, oh, it's easy for this guy. Like we, we start like saying, having all these reasons. Why do you think we do that? Like maybe give some people some insight into your backstory and your things that have made you build this expertise because it's not like you're just an athlete yelling at people oh come on you got to get fit and like be healthy yeah so i i want to create a little bit of language correct for before we kind of go forward and uh when we think about health and wellness it's fitness is just one pillar of it um we we are just we ourselves are simply souls having a human experience and the flesh, our bodies, again, whether you're talking about how fit you are or all these things, it's only one component. And the reason that the health of our world is disintegrating is because everything is disintegrated, mental, physical, spiritual, and emotional health. It's beautifully tied together as one. It's one big cord tied together. And when you think about it, you've got something, so you've, you've maybe focused on um, your mental health. You've gone to a psychologist or you've gone to a therapist or you've gone to your pastor and you've really focused on like this, this mental health component of what you've been dealing with. But yet you still haven't changed the way you eat. You still haven't ch- changed your fitness and you still haven't changed these things. So holistically, your health is still not great. It still doesn't create all that much change. Conversely, you could go to the gym, you could be, have a six pack abs, you could feel uh, as strong as an ox, but yet spiritually you're disconnected and mentally you're an absolute disaster. You still are not and in great overall health. You see some of these people, health. bro, that and are when we six talk packed about out health, and they have low testosterone, they're all jacked up, they can't sleep, 
I've seen them before. They're like they're they're out of energy, but they're like yeah, they'll push. They're just they're still shredded. So just like doesn't necessarily mean anything. And, totally. And when you think about health, you have to come back to that concept and that construct that we were built and we were made in God's image, and He didn't make us the human being, he made us the soul because the soul, when it dies, our flesh will stay behind and our soul will go to heaven to be with him. And he is what made our soul and our soul is complex. Our soul is integrated. Our soul is made to be something that's unique. And so we have been made not to be mediocre. We've been made in God's image, which is to be excellent, which is to be great, which is to be world-class. And this is all around world class. Yes, we have a calling that we are meant to be world class at, in which we are meant to serve. But in order to realize those promises, we have to prepare our bodies and minds and hearts and ultimately soul. Our soul is made up of four things, our heart, our mind, our body, and our environment or our social network, our people around us. And those things are what make a soul whole. And that is what we work on. And that is what we do and what we create in a deeply integrated way. And oftentimes as entrepreneurs, as business people, we forget that we are a soul. We forget that soul health, complete health is what we are after, is what we need to make sure that we can continue to steward our bodies on a deeper level and in a deeper way. And so kind of going back to your story, to your question, um, when I was 12 years old, I had um, this interaction with God. Uh, I grew up in a uh, a home that was deeply, deeply spiritual, had amazing parents that taught me to have a relationship with Jesus. And uh, I had a dream one night and clear as day, can see his face. There's Jesus standing there and he said, Justin, one day you are going to redeem the health of the world through uh, through magnification of health. Um, and I was like, I woke up one that next morning. I was like, Oh, that's really cool. Like neat. And it was reinforced the next day where my dad, we were driving back, um, uh, from a hockey game. I was playing hockey and, uh, I was 12 years old playing with 15, 16 year olds and, um, really didn't stand out that game. I was a little frustrated with myself. And he said to me, he said, talent will get you noticed, but consistency will get you paid. And your payment will come in the form of spiritual freedom because of what you will do with your level of consistency of mind, body, spirit. And um, it really just it, it solidified in me that uh, of, of kind of the prophecy that was that was put on me the, the night before. And so as I continued uh, down my journey, my, my athletic career kind of um, spoke for itself, but um, I was obsessed with my body. Like, how can I know everything about this vessel? And so at 13, I was reading medical journals. I was wearing heart rate monitors, pulse oximeters, brainwave sensors, asking doctors for my raw blood profile so I could just look at them. But the crazy part was that I just understood it. I didn't know why. I didn't know how. I just got it. Like, it just made sense to me. I could put two and two together. And I, I could see how all these parallels started to actually impact our bodies. And how by looking at this data could actually change certain actions and behaviors in my life. And then I could see the impact of the data the next day. And so this really became like the pattern of my life from the age of 13 to 18, 19 years old. And as I continued um, into, uh, into my uh, academic career, I got a couple of bachelor's degrees, exercise science, nutrition, got my master's degree in exercise physiology, went and got my massage therapy license, and then went into my PhD work in uh, cellular genetics and heart rate variability. And the unique part, as I tell this story the whole time, is as I went through my educational career, every professor was like, oh, no, not this guy again. Like, I don't want this guy in my class. Because I was the guy who was like, everything we're teaching does not make sense. Everything we're learning is like, it's not, it's not integrated. It, why, why are we learning this? This isn't how it works in our bodies. I've been looking at this for so much, like so many years and it's, it's cool. It makes sense. It's good theory, but in practical application, there's a disconnect. There's a lack of a bridge. 
And the teachers were like, I don't know. I don't get paid enough for this. Like, just sit down and learn it. <laughs> and so as I continued to kind of experiment and go through this, um, uh, I ended up getting my first job uh, in, in the NCAA and uh, started to really utilize data in a really specific and practical way for um, athletes and understanding health. And we started to dive into genetics, epigenetics, uh, cellular testing, gut biome paneling, along with the use of HRV. And HRV for everybody out there stands for heart rate variability. Um, best definition I've been able to put together is your body's language or your soul's language of helping us understand how it's adapting to mental, physical, spiritual, and emotional stress. And so when I started to combine all this together and create these personalized solutions for these athletes, we started to see injury rates go down, start to see recovery times drop. We started to see um, illness and sickness rates drop. We started to see uh, uh, performance and uh, wins increase. Um, ultimately, into the, the second year, we won the national championship at the University of Louisville, men's basketball, uh, women's basketball, lost in the national championship final. From there, I went to Miami. Uh, we put 15 players to the National Hockey League in in uh, in three years. All of a sudden, started to get a little bit more recognition for the systems and processes we were putting in place. I started to speak, became a trailblazer in the NHL, um, and for the for the next 12 years, uh, really started to help create integrated systems at the professional level and and change the thought process to how we did things, and it just worked and. Um, in 2019, I would had the, the privilege of, um, working with a couple businessmen, uh, who were owners of NHL clubs at the time. And, uh, they said, Justin, tell us a little bit more about what you're doing. Cause like, I, I see it every day. I see what you're doing, but like, I don't really get it. And to be quite honest with you, I want it. <laughs> I want the energy. I want to be able to do this. Can you do it for me? And so I worked with them for three months and completely transformed the way that they felt, completely transformed their ability to sleep, their ability to transition from time zone to time zone, their ability to just have capacity to handle more and do more. And their energy levels maintained and they weren't doing anything other than behavior change and more awareness as to um, living according to what their body was asking. And they were like, this is amazing. And again, I had God talk to me, he said, faithful servant, you've done amazing serving the, the team and the people that you've wanted to serve. Um, and it's now time for you to serve the people that I want you to serve. Um, and that was the business owners, the entrepreneurs and the executives who have been chasing um, their God given calling, but ultimately feeling like they had to. And how cool to you, because health. these people are you probably seeing this like astronomical for me in, in the event world. If someone's never been to something like this before and they show up, they have they don't know what's going on. They get like the craziest experience ever. Some of the people that have been doing it forever, they may have an experience that they come in with a great intention, yet, you know, it's just like so boom, like huge. Whereas, you know, you're working with athletes, they've already been working with a lot of people. They probably had a small little changes that they needed to do and you're able to like really make a big difference, but they they're already have a good routine. They're stretching, they have the people all the resources in the world to pay for all these people, a business owner, bro, they, they've been taught, Oh, I'm, I'm the business guy. I'll just outsource that. Like maybe I'll pay for this plan or I'll get this widget or this thing. And like, this is why they're so out of shape. Right. And it's like, that's such a huge difference. I had, I had a few things. Uh, one of the things is I'm flying actually to Singapore, Malaysia. I'll be gone for three weeks. What's the, What's the travel? I know you guys just went there as well, maybe three, four months ago. What was your, what's the hack, man? Give me, what's the travel hack? So big thing is when, uh, when you're, whenever you're flying to wherever you're going, um, you want to, it's, it's called sun up and sundowns. The first thing you should do. So make sure that you see the sun set mm. and you see the sun rise where, mm. whether you're flying east or whether you're flying west. So as soon as the plane lands that first day, make sure if you land during the day that you see the sun set that night. Why is that critical? Because it resets your circadian rhythm and lets you know, hey, the sun is setting. I'm going to get that natural red light exposure and it's going to allow me to start secreting some more melatonin that night. So I'm going to get, again, mm -hmm. on that time span. 
The second thing is, and this is a critical one, is you always, always want to make sure that you're not eating during your typical sleeping hours. So if you are, um, let's say you're going from LA to New York and you fly out there and in New York, they're having breakfast. Uh, you've got a breakfast meeting at 8 a.m., yep. which is typically 5 a.m. LA time. You shouldn't eat breakfast during that breakfast meeting. Why? Because you're typically sleeping. So your body is not prepared or to be... Uh, to ultimately be digesting food and it's going to start disrupting your circadian rhythm. Same thing going from New York to LA and you have an evening meeting and the reservations for nine o'clock or if you, let's just go even a re reasonable time, 7.30 at night, which is 10.30 New York time. Well, at 10.30 New York time, you're not usually eating dinner and so you shouldn't be eating during that dinner meeting. So prepare to go earlier or just stick to something liquid. And by if you can stay disciplined to that, I guarantee you jet lag and um, uh, having sleep disruptions while you're traveling will completely start to dissipate. So sun up, sun down rule and not eating um, during uh, your typical sleeping hours on your native time zone will eliminate all of this. So yes, depending on where you're traveling to, your eating window may be a little bit more narrow than than it usually is. But... I guarantee you, you will start to have a much greater um, uh, greater experience while you're there and you'll actually feel more rested, you'll sleep better, you won't feel bloated, you won't feel heavy, you won't feel lethargic, you won't feel tired. Um, and then another kind of rule to think about is if you are in a time zone for less than 48 hours, so less than two days, stay on your native time zone. So stay, keep everything the same. So again, I'll use the LA to New York time uh, example. If your native time zone is Pacific and you're going from LA to New York City and you're there for less than two days, make sure you're still sleep, you're still getting in bed and sleeping at your typical um, typical time. So you'd be going to bed at maybe one o'clock a.m. New York time if it was 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. Um, Pacific time. But then waking up according to your LA time as well. Uh, but if you're there for greater than two days, get on to that um, that new time schedule. How long would you do the possible. eating one? Because I'm, I'm going to be over there, and this is totally different. This is 14 hour difference. So this is like, you know, 10 yep. p.m. for me is like the morning there. So how long would you yeah. say? Obviously, if I'm going a week, I would stick to the eating thing. But three weeks, I'm like, bro, three weeks, yep. bro. How do I, yeah. can I please get on a little bit of like a normal schedule? I've heard going there isn't too bad. I've heard coming back is what people more struggle with. Um, I know you just did it. So obviously struggles like, you know, if they don't follow what you're talking about. I also have a three-year-old coming with me. So there's like a little bit of variables that are not able to be. Totally. So it's a great question. Typically what you want to do, especially with this, is if you can get completely dialed into the sun up, sun down rule, that's cool. really going to help you right away. And then your first three days, stick to that eating rule where your time window for eating yeah. is just much more narrow and then slowly open it up. Because what will happen is if you stick to that um, morning and uh, seeing the sun in the morning and seeing the sun at night, it's going to very quickly shift your circadian rhythm. And so because of that, what will happen is that jet lag will, by that third day, will have completely dissipated because that 12 to 14 hour time switch is difficult. And, and you're right. Uh, Elise and I just did it for, we were there for three weeks as well. And um, all of a sudden, the first two days, um, I still remember, it was the second day in and it was 5 p.m. in the afternoon we had just seen the sunset. We were in the mountains of Vietnam. It was beautiful. It was gorgeous. We were sitting in the hot tub outside. Um, I hadn't eaten um, because it was, uh, uh, again, it was like the middle of the night um, where we were. And I got out of the hot tub. I showered. Elise goes, I'm just going to do my hair. I was like, sounds good. <laughs> and I laid down and I woke up and I saw 545. I was like, amazing, must be dinner time. 
5.45 the next day. <laughs> so I had slept for 12 hours. and um, But again, I woke up, saw the sunrise. And that third day is really when I started to get back on the uh, the new Asia um, feeding schedule for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and all of a sudden you're into it. And, every, and all of a sudden we're talking to people who have been there for six, seven, eight, nine days. And they're like, man, I still haven't gotten this time zone thing down. I still haven't like, I, I, I don't, don't feel like eating ever. Like the food is so good, but I want to, but I don't feel well. And that's a, that's a big thing. So sun up, sun down, uh, don't eat while um, you're typically sleeping uh, on your native time zone. Uh, if you're there for greater than three days, then make sure that you slowly open that window up as uh, as you get really consistent with it. And a third thing you can do, I guess, um, which goes back to like the morning routine component is get some type of movement and exercise in first thing um, in the morning because it's uh, it'll be critical to uh, to just being able to, again, reacclimate when it comes to... Uh, and what's a minimum reset. for people that are like wanting to do sun up, sun down, even... I know you do it every day. Most of the people listening are not even doing it at home, right? So what's a minimum? Yeah. I, I always like to have at least a baseline, right? There's the optimal. Like what's a minimum that you would ask people to do if they were to go outside in the morning, see the sun or watch the sunset? How long do they do it? Do they have to be outside? Can they do it through the window? Like how does that work? Yeah, ideally you're getting direct sun exposure uh, th first thing in the morning. So for me, when I wake up, uh, I walk out, uh, I spend uh, first 15 minutes in prayer um, while the sun's coming up. It's beautiful. Uh, it's tranquil. And uh, getting your fresh air, uh, getting some direct sun exposure. Um, but then there's going to be the days where um, the sun comes up a little bit higher and I've just been in that direct exposure. So if again, at minimum, if you're not waking up with the sun, um, at least as soon as you do get up, give yourself 15, 20 minutes to be in that direct sun exposure light. And there's going to be the other people who are like in Northern U S or either in, or even in Canada. Uh, I'm from Canada. So, um, I suffer from this when I go back home is sun doesn't rise until wow. eight thirty, nine o'clock in the morning during the winter. And, um, uh, so a way in which you can combat that is with, um, s some form of red light. Uh, so red light first thing in the morning, uh, I've got red lights in, in my office right here that, uh, that I use if, um, it's a really heavy over cloud day here in, in Florida or whatever, but, um, uh, the red light is a way that you can start to mimic that so that you can uh, still. What's still so get wild that to exposure. me is I was thinking about your guys' programs and, and I want to jump into kind of how you guys do your whole process. I think that'd be cool for people to see. I thought about like health insurance, like health insurance for a family can be like 1500 bucks or something like that. And I was sitting there like with two thoughts. One, I can't believe that. Why can't we like have people on health insurance and have them go through all this process that would save people a bajillion dollars if they were to just understand this whole process, do blood work correctly. And then there's the specialist side. I really believe in specialists, but there's not enough collaboration in your guys' space. Uh, my neighbor across the street just had a quadruple bypass surgery at like sub 40 years old. He's like, man, I'm just feeling like a little bit of tightness over the holidays. Goes like, oh, all your arteries are clogged. So we see him, my wife goes, hey, are they saying to change anything in your diet? And they were like, well, they just kind of said, you're not going to eat chicken and broccoli for your whole life. So just try to like, you know, just a, a, what is it called? Like when you just moderations, that was the only thing. And I was sitting there going, I get like, you know, I don't want Justin doing my spinal surgery or even replacing my heart because I, I don't know if he knows how to handle the scalpel as well. You don't but want where is the place where we have a specialist but a whole, the whole approach, like how do we leave people like this? This is insanity. And how does health insurance not cover this? Just so freaking annoying. I think that's where it also comes back to what I mentioned at the beginning is that continuum, Crazy. right? That it's fake me health off. continuum. Like on the, on the left side, that death and disease standpoint, this is where, um, and, and I say this openly, this is where Western medicine, like I want, I want people to be around. like, I need a kidney replacement. I need, uh, I broke oh, yeah. my arm. Um, I have cancer. 
get me the best doc that is here in the US because right. that's who I want working on me. That's who I want dialing in. But anything outside of that, I do not want to be in that system. I don't want to have anybody touch yeah, me. Yeah. I don't want to be near anybody because they've never they've never leaned into that. They've never understood it. And quite frankly, we, we, we're going to get off on a tangent <laughs> if we keep going down this road, but um, it it's all run by money. And at the end of the day, it's how can how can we spend the least but get the most? That's how our system is built. How can how can the system do the least amount of testing, the least amount of personalization, the least amount of education, the least amount of relation, uh, like creating relationship with the people they're serving, but yet get the most amount of money out of the insurance companies, get the most amount of money out of the clients, get the most amount of money out of the people. And that's how that operates and runs. Where for us, what we want to do is, hey, how can we serve? How can we create relation? How can we create individualization? How can we create personalization? And how can we create education education and empowerment of the people so that they can take ownership of their own health and own their health again? Because quite, because again, I come back to this, is when you think about it, health is the ultimate form of wealth. You, you mentioned it very early on in the, in, the, in the episode. Health, ultimate form of wealth. But time is the asset. And oftentimes we don't focus on our greatest form of wealth until it affects our asset. We don't focus on wealth until we all of a sudden go into the hospital for three weeks and we realize, man, like I need to really focus on this. Or we get sick for the 14th time in eight months with a cold. And we're like, man, this can't be normal. And that is when we all of a sudden start leaning in. And so what we have to do is we have to switch, flip the switch to have people protect their asset, which is time. If we can protect that asset by ultimately focusing on health first, everything changes. Because now you have more energy. Now you have more capacity. Now you have more resiliency. Now you have more awareness and more ability to give more of you to every mission, vision, and, um, and endeavor that you're focusing on. Whether that's more on your family, whether that's more on your spouse, whether that's more on your business, whether that's more on your kids, whatever that is. But you can be around for more. You can be present for more. Ed Milet talks about it all, of, all the time, the power of one more. Well, what happens if your one more came 20 years too soon? What happens if your opportunity for one more, one more business venture, one more vacation with your family, one more service uh, event that you wanted to throw came 20 years too soon and you never actually realized the fruits and the promises that God had for you never actually realized the full flower and the full plan that God had available for you simply because you weren't willing to steward and weren't able to really get fully un behind you and your soul, you and this earthly vessel that you were embodying and carrying you and the, the, the plan of Christ with you. Just imagine that for a second. Let that sink in. Isn't that wild? That's, That's crazy. impact. That's impact. For the first time, for the first time, like this, this is, it's such a passion of mine. For the first time in the history of humanity, we have seen a drop in average lifespan in both men and women wow. two years in a row. Men went from 75 to 74.1 to 73.6. Average lifespan of a man is 73.6 years old. Male or females went from 79.7 to 78.2 to 78.1. Average lifespan of a female is 78 years old. For the first time ever, we've seen drops two years in a row. First time ever. All while we have more technology, more information, more experts, more um, testing tools, technology yeah. than ever more before. <laughs> but yet we're seeing 
a disintegration of the lifespan. How long somebody, man or woman, is here on earth? We are seeing a drop, a reversal in average lifespan. We can go down the road and we can say, hey, obesity is its highest, mental health and suicide is at its highest, um, spiritual and overall fulfillment is at its highest, uh, or as it is at its lowest, pardon me, um, uh, stress and burnout is at its highest in upper management, retention of talent is at its lowest. Like we as a society are seeing disintegration of overall health because everything is dis integrated, mental, physical, spiritual, emotional. We're treating them in silos. And that is why we are seeing this disintegration of our health overall, why we're seeing a drop in average lifespan, why we're seeing a rise in all of these individual mental illness and emotional illness and physical and spiritual illness. We don't have an emotional health crisis in the world. We don't have a mental health crisis in the world. We don't have an obesity crisis in the world. We have a health crisis. That needs to be heard. It is a holistic, integrated health crisis that we are dealing with here. And if we continue to keep trying to silo it, keep trying to deal with things in a segmented way, we will continue to keep disintegrating our, our health overall because it has to happen in a holistic ecosystem. And I feel like people try to do things and it doesn't change. You talked about all these things that are out there. Supplements for one, right? There's like a million of them. Like if that's not helping the overall lifespan, it's crazy, especially because for guys, it's not like we are dying in war or dying of crazy things the way that we did in the past. So the fact that lifespan's going down is pretty wild. Like there's not quite as much going on as, as there has been in the past. And I think uh, even they talked about primitive culture tribes, though their lifespan is lower, if you take out like accidents and things that are like that modern world stuff would fix, like just the, the prosperity would fix. But if they live their life the same, their lifespan as well is like way up there in 75, 76, like no different. And it's just wild to me that this is like you're talking about this disintegration Go into a little bit of how you talked about like the number one metric that you talked about and then how we can kind of, we can really integrate those things. Cause HRV is something I never heard really anyone talk about. And it's very interesting because you could probably get to know it. Like if you didn't wear a wearable device that shows you your HRV, now you're in tune with it that you'd be like, man, I know that my HRV is low today. I know that I'm not recovering the same. I could tell, but you kind of have to feel it. The same thing. Even when I wore my first aura ring after a while, I was like, all right, now I know I know what it feels like if I got bad sleep. Like I'm like it's not that not that difficult to tell, but you, you don't know if you don't have any data, you don't know what to track, but it seems like a lot, right? If you track supplements, if you track workouts, if you track health was basically eating non-calorie sweetener things that looked like candy for like the last 20 years was how can we pack as much artificial stuff into a zero calorie meal as we possibly can? to help people lose weight and then die inside. Talk about HRV, how we can track it, what does it mean? And like, how does these, these integration, these different platforms or different things, how do they affect that number? Yeah. So it's a great question. And when we kind of take a look back at this, uh, what we ultimately want to do is we want to bring it down to one simple metric. Uh, because you, you you brought it up, your aura ring, your whoop yeah, band, I got a whoop band because well, my wife technically bought it because she saw everyone wearing them. The uh, whatever the whatever the wearable device mm-hmm. is, there's 90 different things that they're throwing at you. There's a bunch of different algorithms, but what's a readiness score? What's a recovery score? What's a sleep score? What's a um, a, a wellness score? Like it keeps us confused, and if we are confused and we can't articulate what we're looking at, there's no way that we can ultimately use it in an empowered way. It keeps us just, well, I guess this is what I'm supposed to do, and I'm, I think I understand, but I'm not really sure. And that's where, and, and again, I talk about spiritual warfare all the time. That is where we want to be kept. And in Proverbs, it talks literally about the truth will come out and empower you. Everything else 
will be well, a business will be made from it. And so it talks about evil or this state of like self-fulfilling, not something that's God given is going to be tried to make a business out of it. Now, I'm not saying that these companies aren't trying to do something well. I'm just saying it's become some level of self-serving. It's come some level of about the money rather than truly serving the people. And for us, what we want to do is we want to take you from a level of comp- incompetence to a place of competence because competence increases clarity. You know exactly what to do. Clarity increases your confidence. Hey, I know what to do. I can do this. This is, this is easy. And confidence increases your consistency. And consistency ultimately yields the change that you're looking for in your life. And so if we can take you on that journey in a very purposeful way, it becomes a big action step. And so when you come back to this one metric, this one metric will change the way that you see holistic health. Because HRV stands for heart rate variability. And it's the measurement of how our soul or how our body is dealing overall with mental, physical, spiritual, and emotional stress. How well is it handling and adapting to it? Because our body can't tell the difference between mental, physical, spiritual, and emotional stress. So if you go for a run, let's say you go for a one-mile run and you run really, really hard. Or you're on back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back Zoom calls. Your HRV curve looks could look the exact same the next day. The exact same. If you're going through a breakup or you're selling your company for a massive exit... One's an emotional high, the other's an emotional low. Both have different mental capacities and mental strains. Your HRV curves will look the same. And what we have to understand is that stress, conscious stress or not, subconscious stress, it's not a light switch. You don't turn stress on and turn stress off. Stress is like a dimmer switch. And it's sliding up or it's sliding down. Is your light constantly bright and it's going to burn out sooner or later? Or is it turned down? And thus, because it's turned down, you're able to turn it up a little bit more and handle more stress in certain seasons, but then turn it right back down again. And if it's constantly on, if it's constantly high, and we're not aware of it, it's like that smelly room you talked about where it's constantly on and we're just going and we're just going and we can't figure out why we get sick all the time. We can't figure out why we can't remember anything. We can't figure out why we've got anxiety. We can't figure out why any of this is, oh, this is how we can't sleep well. This is just the way life is. But our light's been on for so long because our stress meter is so high. And if we were to look at our HRV score, our HRV score would be super low, meaning we're not adapting well. Hey, Nicholas, I need a little bit of help. It's your body communicating to you. Hey, I need you to focus a little bit more on me. I need you to eat some foods that are a little bit more restorative for me. I need you to focus on your environment. Get a little bit more breath work in. I need you to go and give me a little bit of a meditation break. I need you to go and get around people that are supportive and just give yourself like a, a, a time out break. I need you to focus on your sleep a little bit more. I don't need you sending emails until one o'clock in the morning and then waking up at six to see the sunrise. I need you to sleep in a little bit more. I need you to get a night routine that shuts you down. And all of a sudden, as you start to engage and you start to turn the dial down on that stress, you see your HRV curve start to come up. You see, hey, now we've got some more capacity to handle more, more capacity to do more, more capacity to have more energy. But the thing is, is so often we know what health looks like. We've got this picture. We see this person. They wake up in the morning. They're vibrant. They're full of energy. They they can go and get their workout done. They've got the, all the energy of the word to, world to get every single to-do list thing done on that list. Yet when they come home, they've got energy to play with their kids, be present with their spouse, run off to um, soccer games or hockey games or basketball games or tap class or art class or go play and hang out with their friends at night or whatever they might want to do. We know what that looks like, but the issue is we don't know the steps and directives to get there. Why? Because we don't know where we are today and we don't know enough about ourselves. We don't know enough about this vessel, this soul, mind, body, heart, Mental, physical, spiritual, emotional. We don't know enough about it. 
And the moment that we start to understand this, the moment that we start to understand this language, the moment we start to understand it can make decisions based off heart rate variability, that is what empowers us to go, hey, you know what, Justin, today, I need to get another 20 minutes of exercise in because I've really neglected that. And I've noticed the last three days that I've neglected that, that my HRV scores dropped every single day. I, I should focus on, I should get my immune function protocol in today, which has been derived off of my cellular testing that I do every quarter because I now know what my body actually needs. I'm not guessing and just grabbing random supplementation. I now know what my diet should focus on and what it should really be on because I've gotten my DNA and epigenetic information back and my gut biome panel. So I really know what I should be focused on. And you have the blueprint to your body. Never would we ever go and buy a TV throw it up on our wall and say, hey, I know how to connect every single piece uh, of wiring in here and it's going to run like this. Because if you're not an expert in it, you're not going to have a certain wire connected and you're going to try to turn the TV on and it won't turn on. Or you're going to try and turn the sound up and it only plays out of the TV, not the surround sound speakers that you have. You have to connect the cables. You have to connect the dots. And that's what has to happen within our bodies is we're all so different. We're all so unique. We all need different things. And if somebody's telling you, you have to go through A protocol or B protocol or C protocol or use this supplement or this supplement or this one or this diet or this diet or this diet or this morning routine or that morning routine or this morning routine, and they haven't asked you about your HRV and they haven't asked you about any type of personal testing, it's not built for you. And because it's not built for you, that's why we feel, that's why we live in a society that goes, I've done all these things. I've done all these protocols. Nothing works for me. I'm just going to give up and I'm just going to do whatever I want anyways because I've been regimented on my diet. I've been so diligent and so focused on my workout routine, but I don't lose any weight. I don't feel any more energized. I've gone, I've bought all the fancy tools for my room to sleep in uh, to have blackout shades and a cooling bed and a vibration mattress and certain lights that flash at certain intervals to get me into circadian rhythm, but I still don't sleep any better because those things haven't been made for you. And the reason is, is because we have to get back to what matters for us. All these tools, all these strategies, all these things are all great, but they're not all great for you and not all great for you all the time. And the more that we can understand what we need, the more that we can be empowered, the more we can sort through what is actually going to move the needle and what isn't, the better we can discern what actually gets exposed to our vessel. And we create this time energy shield around us that no longer has us wasting our most precious asset, which is time, because now we are able to become super focused on our ultimate form of wealth, which is our health. And we know what we're actually looking at. And that number, HRV, helps dictate that to us and what levers we need to pull and where we need to focus. So good, from man. A habit and I know that you, standpoint. there's two things. One, I would love for t people to know exactly how they connect with how you guys do all that. You could tell that you have a metric that you track, but there's also all these tests that just give you plain data that allow you to really do the things that are right for your body. And, and I, I would like for you to go over that. But if you could first give people, the the kind of ranges i remember you were like hey if you're in this age range you kind of want to be looking at these kind of core ranges obviously i'm not gonna you know i would i you, you have like hours on this so i with a grain of salt of i know it's not gonna be perfect but just kind of what ranges should they be in and then how can they work with with you guys and then i would love for you to pray at the end of just releasing health over everyone and, and realization of of the benefits of health would be awesome so when you talk about HRV, there's going to be this spectrum in which you need to fall. And when you look between the ages of 25 and 35, your average HRV should be somewhere in that 65 range. So if you're falling somewhere between 50 and 75, that's where you want to be in that age bracket of 20 to 35. 35 to 55, somewhere in that average of about 45. So 35 to 55 in that range. And then if you want to be, uh, and then when you're, uh, 45 to 55, uh, in that, in that age bracket, uh, again, somewhere between 30 and 50. And then if you're 55 or older, 
somewhere greater than 25. And the issue is, is that we start to see people start to chronically be low. Um, and I've seen it so many times where they look at their HRV and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm like low twenties or I'm low thirties and they're 35, 45 years old. And all that's a sign of, it's not good. It's not bad. Doesn't mean you're going to die tomorrow, but a really key thing to know and understand with this is that, um, your body's under chronic stress. It's chronic stress. And so you're living in the fake health continuum. You're living in that space of fake health where 90% of people live. And if you can get attuned to that and start to accept that and understand, hey, I am living in a disease-free but symptom-full space, I need to figure out how to release this from myself. I need to figure out how to give myself an opportunity to get out of this. And it's going to be through habits and behaviors and life. I had a day that I think Amanda and I, we tried to like stay up super late. And I think we stayed up till like 12 something in the morning. I had some drinks that night. I ate, I ate a huge thing of like steak fajitas or whatever. And my HRV, I was trying to look it up. We yeah, yeah. Everything and I, I kind of wanted to see too, to be honest. So I was like, oh, let's see like how much this messes with my heart rate and how much does this mess up with out. my other stuff. But I, I'm trying to look at it. But yeah, it was like something like, like 30, like low 30, like 31 or something like that the next day. And it just showed like my strain was really high that day too. So it showed like on the loop that you guys track is like, I did a lot of activity with Kingston that day. And then my HRV was like smashed down as well. So it was just like, I did everything wrong. And I was like, oh my gosh, Justin's going to kill me. Um, but I was just, it was really cool just to, to see that should be obvious, right? Like I did it on purpose, not on purpose, but I knew it wasn't going to be good. But I just like, oh, I had dessert too. I ate big steak. Yeah. And then I had this like probably 2,000 calorie dessert at like 11.30 p.m. It was huge, man. Like just absolutely monstrous. And then I went home and I went to bed super late. And it was just, it was gnarly. But dude, I, I appreciate it. I'm just, it's cool. Just uh, I think the curiosity, people getting excited about health. Realizing that athletes, they have to physically perform. So because of that, they take care of all these other parts of their body. Yet all of us at the end of the day, like we're all performing in some way. Mentally, we're there for people. We're there for our kids. And I think that when we like have that performance, that's really what changed me. Like I met a boxer and he didn't tell me I could just lose weight, but he just was like, I want to perform better. And I was like, I never thought about that. Like just being able to reach my potential, recall things like you talked about, less mental clarity. I mean, my son, as soon as I get done with this man, we're going to go out to dinner, but I'm going to go literally run him for like two hours. And that's so important. And it doesn't just come with low age. It comes with maintaining health like you talked about. So how can people connect with you, man? Thank you for being here with us. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's been an absolute pleasure. And, uh, I'm super active on Instagram, um, at Justin Roth. And then what our team actually does is we actually offer, um, uh, free, um, uh, wellness blueprint comp consultations to be able to just really take a dive into where you're at. Everybody has access to HRV. I guarantee you almost a hundred percent of people listening to this, um, podcast, if you have an Apple watch, a Fitbit, a Polar, a Garmin, a Whoop, an Aura, um, any form of wearable device, you're gathering HRV. You probably just don't know about it. And so you can actually book a call uh, and go through this with nice. our team um, at ownitcoaching.com and th literally be able to lean in and have full access to to everything and just to understand your body better. Um, because uh, when you when you leave that call with our team, you're going to you're gonna have a, a newfound competence and understanding of your body and how it's communicating with you. You're going to have the clarity of what action steps you need to take and, and literal personalized action steps of what is going to be meaningful for you. You're going to have the confidence to go and implement it immediately. You're going to have then the ability to be consistent with that. And then you're going to yield a change within 24 to 48 hours. I guarantee you that. And so um, we offer those, like I said, at ownitcoaching.com. You can find out more about everything that we do there. But um, that's also where you can sign up for those. Um, awesome, man. Uh, yeah, those check them out on calls. Instagram because you'll be able to see 
that he's always waking up with the sun. He's hitting the sauna every day. That's something else that you really love to do that you can, some of the actions you do with your different HRV scores, you can see it all. So you get to see someone living the lifestyle, which is really cool. Or even the sleep hacks. I remember when you guys did that going to Asia and try to keep your sleep a certain way. And I was like, all right, you know, these are really cool things. And then also own it coaching.com, right? That's correct. Own it coaching.com. Awesome, man. Thanks so much for serving the guys today. This has been amazing. You're welcome, Nicholas. It's been great.